Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below the video where you will find links to all my online shenanigans, including how to get my patterns for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit's Facebook group, how to support me on Patreon, and how to get my merchandise. Today, I've decided just we're gonna have a little chat gonna have a little vlog action I haven't done one of these in a while and I just wanted to talk about things that I have been doing of course this is watch Barbara knit and so I'm gonna kick everything off with what I am knitting right now I am working on a uh, mystery knit along I have been working on this for a while it's actually a very challenging thing for me to design and obviously since a mystery knit along I can't show it to you so I haven't had much show you but I am working on a new shawl and I decided I was going to do something that I normally don't do and show it to y'all while it is in progress. So the store, the yarn store I work at, which is a good yarn, Sarasota just recently brought in a new yarn, which is really exciting. It is a yarn called La Bien Ami, and it is from Paris. It's so exciting. And so this is what the logo looks like. There we go, La Bien Ami. Um, it is a hand-dyed yarn that is hand-dyed in Paris. And the particular uh, base that I am working with is, what is it called? Merino Singles, okay? And it is, um, here we go. I'm gonna show you the tag. Is it is it showing up? Ooh, ooh. There we go, focus. Merino singles. It is 366 meters or 400 yards per 100 grams. That is a fingering weight yarn. It is 100% superwash. It is a single ply yarn. I have already used up most of one ball. So I'm going to show you the remains of that ball. There we go. Look, this is the little bit of it that is left because I've always moved, already moved on. So this color is Le Petit Nuage, which means the little cloud in French. And I have moved on to Le Grand Nuage, which is the big cloud. And you can see I deliberately chose these because they're really close to each other in color and they're just a slight difference. I didn't want to really, um, I'm not doing a fade, like I'm not doing like a legit fade and I'll link to the video on how to do a fade. I'm not doing a legit fade. I decided I wanted to kind of do a fake fade. And what I really just mean is I'm switching colors, but the colors are really close to each other. So we've got these two different colors and you can see I have a lot of this left to knit, but I've lift, knit like an entire skein of that. And let me show you, it is on the needle. So it's all kind of bunched up, but here is where I am. Let's make sure it's, there we go. Here is where I am in this shawl. This is the answer, the question that I'm showing you the back of it. <laughs> Here we go. So there, now there's the front. Um, I did a video a while back on how to do the woven stitch and everybody's like, do you have a pattern with that in it? And I was like, I, I really, I don't yet, but I love this stitch. So this is the woven stitch and then over here in what I consider the wings has a, just an easy texture stitch. I wanted to do something that was a really easy comfort knitting kind of thing. It is a top down crescent with the uh, increases are making this like little triangular section in the middle. You're going to start at the top right here. I'm pointing with my nose. You're going to start right here. And then we've got the texture on the two sides and the woven stitch in the middle. And as I said, I've just switched colors and I decided to do a little sweet eyelet row at the transition. And then we're just gonna come back to this same texture again in the dark color and finish it out. So the really cool thing is, so this is one whole skein and really it's only gonna get about 
maybe this much longer because the rows have gotten really, really long and in a crescent shape. So like this from here all the way down to here is 50% of your yarn. And the second 50% of the yarn is only going to, it's just going to be a trim along the bottom in this fun and easy texture. It'll be an easy to wear top down crescent. It does not have a name yet. I have no idea what I'm going to call it, but I still got a couple more weeks of knitting on this because it's a whole nother 400 yards. So this is what I have been knitting and it's going to be an easy knit and a comfort knit. Um, obviously I've designed it in fingering weight to use two skeins of fingering weight. It definitely will be adjustable in that if you wanted to do it with a different weight, it's a very simple repeat and it's just repeat for a while. You don't have to use two colors. You could use more than two colors, whatever you want. So this is what I'm working on knitting wise. You can see my needles are in there and here it is. So I don't know how y'all feel about me showing you something in progress, but we're gonna find out and hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully this works out, but there, let's hold it up again so that y'all can see what it looks like. It's going to work really well with variegated yarns. Now I'm going to put this, make sure all my stitches are on my needles. Okay. See how that is. See how the neat, the stitches are kind of up on the needle. Whenever I stuff my project back in my bag, I make sure that all the stitches are completely off the tips like this. See, here are my needles, do, 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 needles, here are my needles. And so it's all down here so I don't lose any stitches. So we're going to put that back in my knitting bag. Okay. It's not going to have a chart. The pattern's not going to have a chart at all. This is like, <laughs> you can see, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to, but you can see it's got notes all over it. This is how I design. This is how I designed. I keep looking at myself in the thing. I, I'm using a new interface and a new recording thing, and it's a little more distracting than my older one. So I'm working on trying to focus on the camera. Sorry if it looks like I'm looking off to the side. Now, that is the knitting portion of the program. If the only thing you are here is for knitting, thank you so much for watching uh, because we are going to move on to something else. And Obviously it's Watch Barber Knit and obviously y'all are mostly here for the knitting, but I decided I want to revisit something I have shared in the past, uh, but only for a short period of time and I am coming back to it. And right now it is really seizing my imagination and that is embroidery. If you watched the short I posted earlier uh, this week, you will recognize some of this. I have been doing embroidery. I enjoy embroidery. I enjoy the, the unplanned nature, like the kind I do is a freehand embroidery. It's an improvisational embroidery. I'm not following any pattern. And when I knit, you know, you have to write a pattern and you have to follow it. And it's not, I mean, it is creative, but it is not improvisational the way that I design. And I, I kind of like the idea of doing something where I just pick it up and decide what I want to do. And a few years ago, for those of y'all who have watched for a long time, I did some embroidery and I did it for a few months, but then I stopped. And the reason I stopped is because it got to the point where looking at a blank piece of fabric, I, I, I was like, it's just a blank piece of fabric and it's hard. It's hard to come up with ideas every single time of what am I going to do? What colors am I going to use and everything? And I've gotten back into embroidery because I found yet another artistic technique that has really seized my imagination and it is gelatin plate printing. Okay. You're like, wait, that, that's, that's, that's not even, that's not even textile arts. What are you talking about, Barbara? Well, gelatin print, uh, printing is you use something, it's a silicone place that is meant to reproduce what were actually gelatin prints. But this, the one I use is called a jelly, J G E L L I plate. 
And I will put a link in the description notes below so y'all could go take a look at a jelly plate. And what it is is it's this flexible plate that you put paint on and you use a roller and you like roll the paint onto it and then you use found objects like texture blocks and things and like stamp on it and that'll lift some of it away and you can use stencils and you can use leaves and you can use feathers you can use all kinds of stuff and then once you've created the image you like on the plate you take a piece of paper and you stick it on there and you peel it off and the image transfers onto your paper. I got into this because I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos on it. If you enjoy watching people make art, I encourage you just to type into YouTube jelly printing or something like that and see all of the amazing things people are doing. So I started doing the paper and if you follow my Instagram, you saw my experiments with paper, but my experiments with paper were just actually a stepping stone because what I really wanted to do was print on fabric. And the reason why I wanted to print on fabric was so that I can then embroider it. So I had, I had to learn this whole other craft to, to create the, the platform to create the, the base, the substrate for the embroidery that I wanted to do. Because looking at a blank piece of fabric, I was having a hard time coming up with what I wanted to do. But when I saw this jelly printing and I saw that you could do it on fabric, I was like, that is really cool. And then I can look at the prints and I have like a structure or an inspiration that will guide Ha what I do embroidery wise it's, uh, it's it's not really paint by numbers because it's it's still I got to look at it and decide what it wants to be but but it gives me something other than a blank palette so um I'm gonna show you I have some pictures here so this is one of my prints I have it right here and you can see, and, and I'm experimenting with this and I have a lot, I have so much to learn about how to print on fabrics because printing on the fabric was very different from printing on the paper. And if you're wondering, this is 100% linen fabric that I got and it has a different texture. Obviously I wanted to go with, I like this kind of natural look and the colors are a lot more muted. So I need to play with that. I'm thinking that next time I set up, because because setting up to do printing is pretty much a whole day thing because you do multiple at a time. I'm thinking, you know, I like this muted look, but also I'm thinking maybe if I print white on it first, let it dry and then do prints with color, some of the color will be brighter. I'll just have to play with it. But this is one that I did. And you can see there's, so the big circle is a stencil and you can see little, little smaller circles. And I tell you, those are the, the a Diet Coke bottle cap <laughs> and there's cardboard in there and there's just all kinds of things. And then I took pictures as I started embroidering. So the first thing, and this shows you what I mean about structure, it, it gives me a place to start from. So I pulled the color out and decided to do this. And then there were these darker spots and that was from a stencil and I used satin stitch to highlight those chunks. And then I didn't take any pictures and here it is done. <laughs> so it's like, and then another few days go went by. So I added in, um, you can see the little, the smaller circles that I was talking about that are soda cap bottles. Um, I did some light color, just a uh, back stitch on the, no, those, running stitch. Did I do running stitch or back stitch? Uh, back stitch. And I did some straight lines and I did some running stitch and I did a whole passel of French knots. And the French knot, I thought I, I was trying to create a negative. I don't know. I was doing all kinds of stuff. I'm playing. I'm playing with color. I'm playing with texture. And that is, so here is the piece of fabric that I created. Now, this is not the first one I did. I have things at various stages of completion here. So this one, the embroidery is done and it's next step. So the first one that I embroidered is this one. 
and I'm gonna hold it up a little closer. So we had a stencil and we had different colors and there's a stencil and then there's some circle I did. Actually, so this is really, you can't really tell, um, bubble wrap. I use giant bubble wrap, but you can see there's some running stitch in pink and then a, a little bit of fly stitching. I really like the idea of making sure that the embroidery goes off the print so it pulls it out a little bit. And it was almost done, but it felt unbalanced and that's why we ended up with a single horizontal line just to balance it out. But you will notice that this is at a different stage than this <laughs> because this is just the piece of fabric that has been printed and embroidered and this it's a bag. I made a bag. I made a project bag. So I, this is aligned here. I'm going to turn it inside out. So that is a white linen. And I'm thinking I might try to print on the white linen and see how that comes up. But the white linen, I bought it as a lining fabric. So it is thinner. So I don't know if the color is going to go through. Um, and also, I am not a seamstress. I am not great at sewing. So I finished this and I realized that I... <laughs> I sewed the seams all the way up, so I had to go back and pick out the seams to, to put these little, and I embroidered these little buttonhole-y things so that I'm going to have to put a drawstring in it to make it a drawstring bag like this. So you know how you've got this and it's going to pull shut like this. I don't know if I need to do like, a, run like another line of stitching here to make it bunch up or if it's okay like this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making it up as I go along. But so the end product, well, the end end game, the end, I don't know, I don't want to call it a product. The end game for these are it's fabric and then I print it and then I embroider it and then it's going to be a bag. So this has achieved, all this needs is the drawstring and it is a done bag. This has been printed, embroidered. It still needs to be sewn. And frankly, that is gonna be the bottleneck because I really, I just don't like sewing machines and I don't like using them. Now, then I have a couple more pieces. Now this piece is the only stage it is at is this has been printed, that's it. So here is this one. And you can see I was playing with different colors and this is a different, so this is actually a insert of packaging that's like a piece of styrofoam that has all these holes in it. And that is how that came out. And you will probably see this one again because I really like the way this stamp looks. Um, this was me trying to get a better idea of how the colors blend on the plate because I did the printing on paper and that just would use paint. And then I had to buy a fabric medium, which you mix with the paint. You got to mix it 50-50 so that it will set with an iron so it won't crack off and it makes the viscosity very different. So it's almost like I have to completely figure it out again. And then I have a third, fourth piece that is this one. And this one is slightly further along in the process because I've picked out the colors of embroidery floss that I'm going to use on this one. Um, and so these are the colors of embroidery floss that are going to go on this particular piece. So that is the stage that one is in. So this one also has a stencil. You see those zigzags in the background? That is a silicone pot holder that I bought at, um, or trivet that I bought at the dollar store. I've been going and just finding things to print with. So that is what is going on the, um, wackiness that I am participating in. And actually it's kind of cool. I want to show you. So I showed you this one and you see all this. So I did this one and then I did this one. And you see how you've got this really interesting blue greenness up here? That is because there was still ink, or still paint on the plate that didn't come, that came off in this second on this print. So if you don't clean the plate in between prints, you'll get echoes that come through from the previous print if that plate didn't get like completely cleaned off. So the really cool thing about these is 
each one of them is unique. They are called mono prints. I couldn't repeat them if I tried, even if I remembered exactly what colors I used and exactly which pieces of bric-a-brac that I used to stamp it and tried to get them in the exact same place, they're gonna be different just because the nature of the fabric and the nature of how it all works. So. I thought I'd share this with you. Um, if you want, I, I love to hear from you in the comments. If you're interested in hearing more about this, by no means will it become a dominant thing on this channel. This channel is still about my knitting because knitting is my job, but this is my hobby. <laughs> I had to get a hobby and I thought I'd share it with you because it's fun and I it's it creative to me and and I just I like talking about it because I'm excited about it right now so let me know if you want to continue hearing about this again uh, I might make some more shorts I doubt it would even be once monthly as video wise or maybe one video a month on this y'all let me know what you think I hope you enjoyed this video it did have knitting content in the beginning and then I went off on my you know embroidery tirade uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, give it the thumbs up and if, click the subscribe button if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos. And thank you so much.